Winter isn't done with us yet. Another round of heavy snow is headed our way. This time it should mostly hit the southeast portion of the state, but it could bring a bit of light dusting through the metro. Denver is getting snow plows ready, but not for the snow that we're going to see tonight. Greg's along with that. Yeah, we're getting snow plows ready mainly for Monday, though, and that's because our next system is moving into the picture Sunday night and into Monday morning, and that could bring a decent amount of snowfall. As far as what's happening in Denver overnight tonight, temperatures dropping back down into the middle teens, and we're expecting a little bit of snow, only a dusting, as uh, Kyle said. Observed high temperatures for today, upper 20s nearing 30 degrees, so very, very chilly. Lyman, upper 20s and 30 degrees as well. 33 degrees in Colorado Springs, Pueblo in the upper 30s. Meanwhile, current conditions on the chillier side. You'll certainly need a winter hat and gloves if you're making your way out the door this evening. Upper teens and lower 20s out towards Lyman and Denver. Leadville at a mighty chilly zero degrees. And this, of course, is all while uh, we're expecting this next system to bring a decent amount of snowfall down towards the south and eastern portion of the state, which is why we have winter storm warnings and winter weather advisories down towards the southeastern plains. Six to 13 inches of snow for those upper elevations near Trinidad, Meanwhile, Lamar, the four to eight inches of snowfall. Same thing goes for Burlington. Overnight low temperatures, as I said, in the middle teens, but the big story moving forward, it's the snowfall that's happening on Monday. I'll break it down for you coming up. If you live in Inglewood, think about staying inside tonight. Police say a mountain lion was spotted in a neighborhood. It was spotted in the area of West Wesley Avenue. That's right near Tejon Street between South Platte and Federal. It's a pretty residential area, so if you do see that mountain lion, police say you should make a whole lot of noise and don't go near it. Call the Inglewood Police Department at the number on your screen. The deadline has passed, yet the crowded field for Denver mayor kind of grew today because candidate ruled out yesterday is back. The Denver clerk's office says they made an error. Longtime community activist Terrence Roberts may still make the ballot for mayor. His petition signatures are currently being reviewed. Last night, the clerk's office told us that Roberts had failed to turn in enough valid signatures and was out. Today, the clerk's office says it didn't take into account some additional signatures that he turned in before the deadline. He is one of more than two dozen announced candidates for Denver's first open mayoral contest in a dozen years. Once signatures are verified, the ballot will be set for the April election. It's going to look like a CBS receipt, and the top two candidates almost certainly will head to a runoff if no candidate gets 50%. The five police officers and paramedics accused of killing Elijah McClain all entered not guilty pleas today. It comes a day after a judge decided to break up their cases. McClain died after Aurora police officers stopped him on a walk home in August of 2019. He didn't do anything wrong. Current Aurora officer Randy Rodima and former Aurora officer Jason Rosenblatt will go to trial in July. Neither were first on the scene that night, but they both helped control McLean while paramedics arrived on scene. Two paramedics accused of injecting McLean with ketamine will be tried in August. An amended autopsy now says the ketamine was directly related to his death. One officer, Nathan Woodyard, is accused of holding McLean in a carotid hold. Woodyard was the officer that originally stopped McLean. He will go to trial in September. A judge is awarding Aurora City Councilwoman Danielle Jurinsky $3 million. She was the target of false child abuse accusations after she criticized the former police chief, Vanessa Wilson. Jurinsky filed the lawsuit in August against Robin Nesetta, social worker for Arapahoe County Department of Human Services and the ex-romantic partner of Chief Wilson. Nesetta is accused of calling a child abuse hotline and making false claims against Jurinsky. That happened a day after Jurinsky called the police chief trash on conservative talk radio. Investigators found that Jurinsky did nothing wrong as it related to her kid. Nesetta resigned her job from Arapahoe County Department of Human Services after the sheriff's office started investigating. Nesetta is facing criminal charges as well. Her trial set for May. Police are looking for more victims after arresting three suspects accused of selling drugs to students. The Boulder's DA office says Mario Moreno, Angelo Torres, and Alder Garcia Rodriguez sold guns to students at schools across the St. Vrain Valley School District in exchange for money and sexual acts. They're accused of selling cocaine, MDMA, marijuana, and marijuana concentrate. All three men are in custody tonight. Longmont police and the DA's office are asking for additional victims to contact them. Police in Loveland are trying to figure out who set a church on fire overnight. Loveland Fire got an alarm to go to the Abiding Love Lutheran Church just before midnight. They found a broken window at the front and a small fire. Firefighters put that out quickly. They found out there had been another fire in the basement that automatic sprinklers got. Police currently don't have any suspect information or possible motive to share. 
Firefighters rescued 25 cats from a house fire in northwest Colorado, the town of Hayden yesterday. Not all the cats inside the home were able to make it out. The cat's owner did make it, but their home is unlivable. Five of the rescued cats are kittens and two are nursing mothers. The cats are now at the Route County Humane Society. A few had some minor burns. Several others suffered from inhalation. With the number of cats they took in, the Humane Society is asking for donations toward medical treatment. Up to a million Coloradans who didn't have access to a retirement plan do now. It's a program the state launched this week. It aims to help restaurant employees, seasonal workers, among others. Here's 9 News reporter Luis De Leon. You guys all set? The ambiance of small business. Yeah, steak or chicken. Can provide a family-like atmosphere. <laughs> For Chris Stromat. We have a lot of fun here. That sentiment is literal. We just have so many long-term employees that, you know, we, we we employ their brothers and sons and cousins and you know what I mean? It's just one big family. It's why the general manager of the longtime Denver Tex-Mex joint Blue Bonnet is hoping a new program by the state actually works for her employees. And I had looked at um, getting us going into a retirement plan and it was thousands to get going. But a law passed by state legislators created a state-run retirement plan called the Secure Savings Program, which officially kicked off this week. No fees for employers and they're not required to match employee contributions. Now, all businesses in Colorado with five or more employees that have worked more than 180 days have to offer either that or another retirement savings plan. For the state-run program, Blue Bonnet got a head start by participating in the pilot for it. We have a lot of long-term employees, especially in the kitchen, that have worked here for 20, 30 years. And for them, they were one of the first ones to want to jump in it because they have nothing um, that, that came from us that they can use. A spokesperson for the state's Treasury Department says their data shows that around 115,000 businesses fall under the requirements to register. I'll take those menus. Straw Matt hopes it provides a sense of security. These employees are like family to us, so we want to make sure that if they've worked for us for this long, that they have something, you know, when they go to retire eventually. So the state's secure savings program is not meant to replace a 401k, but your money and account does follow you to other jobs. As of yesterday, more than 500 businesses have registered, more than 300 exempted because they already offer their own plan, Kyle. At the very least, it allows somebody to kind of get a savings ball rolling, you know, especially for somebody who's a bit younger. That's really significant. Right, and it's hard to really understand whether or not this would actually improve employee retention, but Straw Matt, you heard from there, so she likes to think that it would actually make them more competitive uh, now to just add another thing to offer, really. Yeah, yeah, something to offer in a tough hiring environment. Right. All right, thank you, Luis. The town of Superior is asking the state to give Marshall Fire survivors a tax break. Town leaders say state taxes are adding too much to rebuilding costs. They already waive some taxes tied to rebuilding, but Superior Town trustees say there are still state and RTD use taxes that could cost nearly $10,000 per household. The trustees sent a letter to Democratic Governor Jared Polis and Democratic leadership in the state house asking the state to waive those taxes. Lawmakers already had an opportunity to do that last year through an amendment to a bill supporting disaster recovery, but that amendment didn't pass. Only 328 families have permits to rebuild more than a year after the Marshall Fire. Only one family has moved into their newly rebuilt home. Investigators say there is no evidence that employees at a Taco Bell put rat poison in a customer's burrito. It's kind of been the story of the week. Arapahoe County Sheriff's deputies were called to a Taco Bell in Centennial on Sunday for a disturbance. Customer was upset because the soda machine was down. Customer was compensated with a free burrito. Hours later, that customer went to the hospital claiming that there was rat poison inside the burrito. Investigators confirmed, yep, rat poison. However, after reviewing the footage from inside the Taco Bell, they could find no evidence that employees tampered with the food. Investigators say they've tried talking to the man about what they found, haven't been able to talk with him.